after completing this lesson, you should be able to explain the key difference between start processes and sub processes, recall the steps for configuring them, and describe scenarios when you should isolate steps using a separate process. When building process models, remember that it's a best practice to keep process models short. In this lesson, you'll learn how to break up longer workflows using subprocesses and start processes. You'll also learn how to pick one over the other and in what scenarios you may want to implement one of these options. Let's look at a sample process from the Acme Automobile application. This process model automates the tasks that various employees at Acme Automobile must complete to finalize the collision repairs estimate. The workflow starts with the mechanic completing the new repair estimate form. Once the form is submitted, two additional things must happen. One, the supervisor should get a notification about non-compliant repair items that don't follow company-wide pricing rules. Two, pricing should get approved by the customer. Instead of designing this process as a single workflow, we isolated the notification steps using a sub-process node and the customer authorization steps using a start process smart service. Before I show how to connect process models using start processes and sub-processes, let's discuss how to decide which one is the right choice for you. The main difference between the sub-processes and a start process is the memory usage. A start process will always run on the engine with the lowest memory usage, whereas a sub-process will run on the same process engine as the parent process. If performance is a consideration, a start process is almost always the best choice. Another key consideration is that a sub-process can run both synchronously or asynchronously from the parent process whereas a start process can only run asynchronously. If you need the parent process to wait until all activities in the child process have completed, select a subprocess and configure it to run synchronously. Occasionally, you may need to select a subprocess over a start process. For example, if your process has a functionality that is tricky to debug, select a subprocess. You'll be able to access the subprocess more easily from the monitoring view of the parent process. Now, let's see how to connect processes using either a start process smart service or a subprocess node. To modularize a longer workflow, like the new estimate process from the Acme Automobile app, start by creating separate process models. For example, create the main process to collect and record the estimate, and then create another process model to isolate the customer authorization steps. Once you have both processes built, open the main process and drag and drop the subprocess node into it. Here, you can choose to run the subprocess asynchronously or synchronously, add the process model, and configure the input and output variables to pass data as needed. The Start Process Smart Service is configured differently. Instead of the Setup tab, you'll use the Data tab to configure this node. As a node input, I'll first add the process model that I want to launch. Next, I'll configure the Process Parameters node input to pass the process variable from the main process into the Start Process. Now that you have a better understanding of how a Start Process differs from a Sub Process, and the steps to configure them, let's discuss the four common use cases that are well suited for subprocesses and start processes. First, you can break up a process into several shorter processes if your process requires multiple touches or approvals from different users. This way, your process will be easier to grasp at a glance and you'll avoid creating long living processes. Second, Consider isolating integrations. Integrations can be fragile, and your process will be easier and faster to troubleshoot if the integration steps are isolated. 
Third, you can isolate the steps that are launched using a timer or a rule event. This way, you won't keep the main process active. For example, mechanics at Acme Automobile wants an email notification at the end of each day with the summary of all estimates. Instead of adding a timer event to the end of an existing process, you can create an independent process that starts from a timer. Fourth, Isolate generic steps that can be reused across multiple process models. If your organization has a standard approval or compliance process, create a subprocess model. You can then reuse it across multiple main processes in your app. You can learn more about start processes, subprocesses, and other advanced process design topics on Academy Online. Simply enroll in our Advanced Process Modeling Learning Path. Let's recap. Use start processes and subprocesses to modularize longer workflows. Start process is typically the best choice because of its performance advantages. A subprocess can run synchronously or asynchronously. A start process is always asynchronous. Isolate the steps that contain approvals, integrations, timers and rule events, or reusable operations.